The sound of pages turning means it's time for another episode from the Meredith Library Podcast Studio, bringing you the library's latest news, information, and fun. Good afternoon, Anna. Good afternoon, Matthew. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to episode number 20 of Check It Out on the Meredith Library Podcast Studio. Time just flies, doesn't it? I know. It's so much fun. We're so glad we get to spend this time with each other and all our listeners who are very excited about the Meredith Public Library. We are covering November events this episode, correct? Yes. noir November. And that's the theme. We have other events going on, but we have multiple events under the film noir umbrella. Yes. But I wanted to quiz you and see how much you know about this subgenre of film. Well, I did have an introduction to cinema class, but that was 30 years ago. So let's see how much you've retained. <laughs> yeah, really. All right. Well, what makes film noir? I would say that, well, they're usually black and white because that was when the genre started, I would say, in the 1940s or so. Of course, we can have modern ones, though, that are in color now. And it definitely would take place around crime and detectives. So the grizzled detective with the um, fedora, you know, the hat from those days, would be the one of the main characters. And then there would be a femme fatale character who would be tempting him and perhaps maybe the guilty party. And, of course, he has to solve the crime while um, not being tempted by her feminine wiles. <laughs> Is that, is that right <laughs> so far? It is, yeah. No, you're you're getting a lot of the, the facts right. I From what I've read, it's, yeah, in like kind of the 40s to the 50s. And a lot of the most popular American film right before, that was like the Western. So there was kind of very obvious hero villain, um, very picturesque, you know, landscapes. And a lot of people say due to sort of like disillusionment after World War II, people got a bit more existential, a bit more like questioning the evils of humanity. And so the theme sort of went towards city-based crimes, a bit grimier. Um, yeah, that really high contrast black and white. So the movies were only black and white, but very shrouded in shadows. Um, and the heroes were less sort of obviously just these unrelenting good guys but sort of more complex and maybe Mm anti-heroes and dealing with more like psychological issues and issues of sort of human evil than just like good guy shoot gun like you know (laughs) from like the westerns (laughs) right so it was definitely a genre shift a tonal shift and it was reflecting what was going on in society so we have four big events that are some are more obviously correlated to film noir than others but crime i would say would Mm -hmm. be the through line of all of the events yes so on november 2nd we have noir november saturday double feature which we are showing two films the maltese falcon and mr holmes yes and let me put a plug for the mystery book group as well the mystery book group will be reading the maltese falcon as well so we'll be able to compare the difference between the novel version and the film version People love doing that book versus movie. Book wins most every time, but not every single time. I agree. Uh, but yeah, one will be the Maltese Falcon will be showing from 9:30 a.m. to 11:15, and then Mr. Holmes will be showing from 11:30 to 1:45. And you can stop in and watch a little, or stay for all two. And we will be having popcorn again and movie candy. Uh, people may remember we've had two of these double features already. Back to Star Wars in May and Shark Movies in July. And now we're having November on November 2nd, Saturday morning. And people have enjoyed them, right? Yes, people really had a good time with them. And I think one of the best, I guess, compliments we can get as programmers here at the library was that people wanted to see more movies of that type. The next program that we have that falls under this sort of crime uh, umbrella is a Nancy Drew presentation that takes place on November 16th from 1230 to 130. Is that a Saturday also? Yes. And I'm just going to read the little, little plug, the little blurb. Okay. Come learn about the history of the beloved sleuth Nancy Drew. 
At this presentation, you will learn about the many different editions of Nancy Drew that have been printed since Nancy Drew came out in the 30s. You will learn facts you may not know and be able to ask questions and reminisce about your childhood. You can also bring Nancy Drew books from your collections and share with the group and learn about what year your books are from as well as their value. Feel free to bring any items you have related to Nancy Drew that you would like to show the group. The presenter, Alicia Mello, has been collecting Nancy Drew items for 20 years and loves to talk about the history. Oh, that is so cool. It's almost like one of those memorabilia shows. Yeah, like Antiques Roadshow or something, but with Nancy Drew specifically. Yes, you find out how much they're worth. That could be a special episode. But yeah, she has been a staple uh, for many a generation. Like I feel like every childhood had their own Nancy Drew. Uh, The third program is a program that I'm putting on, which is called Cold Case, A Story to Die For. I love that title. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if our listeners are familiar, but you can purchase these games at bookstores and places like that, which are fake police case files. And you can go through with your friends to try and solve the mystery of like, who committed the murder by going through all the evidence and reading all the interviews and looking at clips of like photos and security camera footage and stuff like that. I think it's really fun that we have one of these going on because sometimes you can't really justify a game that you can only play once Mm -hmm. that you have to spend $20 on. So we have spent the money. Yes. The library has one available for taking out. We do. Yeah, it is this one. So I would like people to come to the event and try it out. And if they like it, we can buy more. But if you can't make it to the event, which is Tuesday, November 19th, 6 to 7.45, you can can check out the cold case of Story to Die For and try the mystery out yourself. Oh, that's so cool. So there are multiple ways to experience it. So when you're doing the game, when you're actually playing it, right, well, how many players is it for? We have an eight-person limit. um, And I don't think that there's necessarily ever a complete limit it's just that at a certain point you're gonna have too many people yammering and trying to read different things and it would probably just become too complicated okay so that kind of answers my my question i was getting at so if you can have different numbers of people for each time you play or whatever people are not it's not really role playing like people do not have to be a particular character then right no everyone sort of just is a investigator or detective um, yeah, not the same thing as a murder mystery party or something. Okay, like that's that. what I wanted to get at to make sure people understand the difference. Mm, yeah, yeah, it's a little bit more realistic. It's more again film noir. Like you're just that detective guy whose name I don't know. <laughs> Sam Spade. Yeah. Okay. You're just Sam Spade going through evidence and uncovering the mystery. You're not Colonel Mustard. (laughs) Okay, sounds good. Um, And then the final event that we have that is film noir adjacent is called Murder and Mayhem, an author visit presentation and book signing for the book Murder and Mayhem, True Crime in New Hampshire from 1883 to 1915. It is on Wednesday, November 20th from 6.30 to 7.30 p.m. So that should be a lot of fun. So we have this author coming who wrote this true crime book. And she also has worked for the state on the cold case unit, so which I know it sounds like a TV show on CBS. So I think she should have a lot of different stories, like different, um, you know, from her different jobs that she's doing. So we're also putting that on as part of NaNoWriMo, too. We'll just throw that in as part of like author inspiration, you know, that someone's coming in, they've had this idea, they want to write a book. They've actually accomplished that. They've gotten it published. You know, so we're going to we are going to talk to her from that angle as well. Well, that's perfect. Uh, Two birds, one stone type of deal. Uh, That is all of the film noir based events that we have coming up. We have a ton of other programs and they are always available to read about and to check out at meredithlibrary.org. You can click on the events calendar and you'll see a explanation of everything we've got going on, which is always so much. Yes, and I'll throw a little bonus in because it's actually not on there as we are discussing this right now. But by the time people are listening to this, it may be there. So they will follow your instructions to MeredithLibrary.org and click on events. On November 26th, it is a Tuesday, we also have Sisters in Crime, which is a crime writing organization, and they send panels of authors to author events. Well, that sounds great. When I was trying to come up with a question for today, 
A lot of them were weird and I couldn't come up with an appropriate crime-based question. So by the time that this is out, it will be a couple days up to Halloween. So I figured, Matthew, I would just ask you, who are you being for Halloween? Before I answer that question, we have to mention that the staff of the Meredith Library will be portraying Batman villains on Halloween in the library. So people should check the front of the library anytime between now and Halloween. If you come in the front door, you will see Batman tied up in a chair with chains around him because the villains have taken over the Meredith branch of the Gotham City Library. Well, how do we save Batman? By coming in trick-or-treating in costume to distract the villains, of course. Oh, well, that makes sense. Total sense. Anyway, so your question then really is, what Batman villain am I going to be for Halloween? And the answer, appropriately enough, is bookworm. Now, for people who are only familiar with the DC universe from the past, like, 15 years or so, can we get some context on who bookworm is? Yes. So, bookworm was actually, well, bookworm is actually in some comics, but he was created for the 1966 Batman television series, starring Adam West and Burt Ward and Yvonne Craig as Batgirl. So that character comes from that uh, era, and he was in two episodes in the first season. Okay, fun. Yes, and of course, obviously, you can tell by the title of Bookworm, he is all about rare books and figuring out how to use books to commit crimes. Sounds like my kind of guy. And Anna, what Batman villain or villainess will you be appearing as? Um, I'm going to be Poison Ivy, uh, mainly because I have a red wig. I don't know that much about her. Do you know? Well, I know Uma Thurman's version in Mm. the uh, Batman and Robin movie, I believe. Actually, Poison Ivy did not appear on the 1966 Batman television series. So you are, as always, from another era. We should mention we want people to put in the comments what they're going to be for Halloween. Yes, let us know what your costume is going to be. Come by, show us your costume. That's right, show it off. Hey, we could use an Alfred, a Commissioner Gordon... And Aunt Harriet, uh, who else? Chief O'Hara. We don't even have a Joker. I know, you know, that's interesting. We, yeah. You're right, we do not have a Joker. So perhaps the Joker will just come on in off the street. Here's hoping. Uh, but yeah, let us know who you're being for Halloween. And tune in next time for our Check It Out Meredith Library podcast. Goodbye, everyone. Bye. <laughs> Sounds like we're at the end of another chapter. Podcast music titled Daytime TV Theme by Kevin McLeod of Incompetech.com. Licensed under Creative Commons by Attribution 4.0. Podcast copyright 2024. Meredith Library Podcast Studio.